Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great and welcome back to the channel. In this video, or better said series of videos, we are going to learn everything there is about Python. We are going to start with the basics and expand our knowledge in the upcoming videos and get into more advanced topics like multithreading, networking, data science, machine learning, parallel programming and all the other super fancy stuff. But before we get into that, we need to learn the basics. So we are going to start with really writing our first hello world program, going over all the building blocks of Python, getting a deep understanding of that, like control flow statements, data types, input output, constants, functions, and so on. We are going to build also a complete project that is going to incorporate all of that knowledge and put it to a test. This video is aimed at getting you a deeper and fundamental knowledge and understanding of Python and not only the basic variables and syntax that is just going to familiarize you with the language. So in order to get us started and ready for more advanced topics like manipulating data streams and creating machine learning models, we first need to learn the basics. So this means first getting our environment set up. For that, we are going to use Anaconda if you're on Windows and if you're on Mac or Linux, you can just download Python from their original source page. The reason for that is that Python and Windows don't work very well together. You can download, of course, the original Python sources and run them on Windows, but this is going to be more troublesome and much harder for virtual environments and all the fancy stuff that's coming later. So if you're on Windows, I would just recommend to go with an Anaconda. The installation is super simple. You just download it, click next, add it to your path, and that's it. You can already start your first Python programs. This video is also aimed to teach you a bit above and beyond the basic fundamental stuff so that you can really build complex production ready stuff in the future. So we're going to skip a little bit uh, of the most basic stuff, like for example, downloading and installing Python. There are a lot of different resources you can use for that. After we are set up with this, we are going to continue with the built-in stuff, the stuff that already exists. So built-in functions, constants, we're going to talk about variables and the basic syntax. We're then going to go over input and output, very important in order to get anything done. We're going to talk about data types, which is something very specific about Python because it supports uh, different data types that are very useful for applications like data science and machine learning. Those include lists, dictionaries and arrays. I mean, all the other programming languages support the same stuff, but Python does it in a more efficient way, so it makes querying and data manipulation so much easier and faster. Uh, we are going to go over the control flow, which means we are going to look at loops, for loops, while loops, if, else, and the basic control flow statements. We are also going to look at something called list comprehensions. We are going to see how we can use lists as queues and stacks, we are going to go over errors and exceptions, and we are also going to go over the most important libraries, which is very important if you are learning Python, because for most of your applications you are going to have libraries already available. Stuff like math, OS, sys, path, regular expressions, hmac, your lib, to do HTTP requests, save data, retrieve data from your computer, uh, find certain patterns in text, uh, decrypt and encrypt your data, and so forth. Uh, we're also going to look into virtual environments. Virtual environments are going to make it possible for you to have different versions of different um, packages which you can switch very easily. So you don't have to install and reinstall your packages because for certain apps you're going to need certain versions of your libraries. We're also going to look into functions arguments, uh, argument extraction, and everything around functions. And we're going to go into manipulating data. As I mentioned before, Python is really good for data manipulation and you get all the stuff in vanilla Python, but there are also really cool libraries like NumPy who implement, for example, dictionaries in a different way, uh, which gives you the power to do really complex data manipulation tasks in no time. And then we're going to build a project. We're going to build a small 
Photoshop-like application, but without a complex UI. So we are going to retrieve stuff from our PC, we are going to uh, adapt images, rotate them, change them, um, do some editing on them, manipulate them in any way possible and save them back to our PC or maybe upload them somewhere. We are going to uh, see how we can translate images into arrays, how we can manipulate those arrays, move it back and forth, uh, try it in different data formats, save it back, create temp files out of it. So all the heavy duty stuff you're really going to need in your coding career. And this is just the beginning. In our follow-up videos, we're going to go deeper into specific advanced topics like multi-threading, networking, concurrency, building applications, UI using stuff like and libraries like TK Inter, things like data analysis, machine learning using libraries like NumPy, Pandas, uh, TensorFlow, and so on. But before we can get to all that fancy and interesting stuff, we first need to go through the basics. So without losing any more time, let's get into it. So after configuring your environment and opening your favorite IDE, let's first test if everything is working fine. So for that, we're just going to use the print function and print hello world. I don't think we can get any more original than that. So in order to run this, just type into your console python and the name of your file. So in my case, this is going to be 1.2 built in constants and functions and run it. And as you can see, we're having the output hello world. So before we do anything too fancy, let's first go over the built-in constants and functions. So the print function was already a built-in function. As you see, we haven't defined anything, we just used it and it came out of nowhere. It didn't come out of nowhere, but this is rather the already defined set of functions and constants that Python is providing you out of the box. And there are many of those functions. Let's go over some of the most uh, basic and useful ones. So for example, apps is going to give us an absolute number. So apps of minus two is going to be two. So let's run this. We again execute our file. And as you can see, the output is going to be two. Another one of those would be, for example, pool. So this is going to evaluate the value in between and give us a true or false. So for example, if we want to see if one is larger than two, we can run this and see that we get the output false. Another very interesting point is how can we run different code? So for example, let's say that we have a script and we want to run that script in Python. So how would we do that? Let's say we write some type of source code. So for example, source code is equal to something. So let's say it is equal x is equal to 10. We then go to the next line, so backslash n. Then we say that y is equal 5, for example. Then we again have a backslash n to go to the next line. And we type in print x divided by y. So we of course know that the result should be 2. But let's say this is some code that is living in a text or, or somewhere else in our system and we want to execute that. So in order to execute it, we first need to compile it. So our execution code is going to compile it. So note that compile is again a built-in function. We're going to pass our source code. We're going to pass the type. So this is a multi-string and we're going to pass what operation we want to do with it which is going to execute it. And after that, we just execute our code. So exec, exec code. Let's run this. And as you can see, the result is two. So pretty cool, a lot of built-in stuff here. So let's continue. I'm going to delete this and paste in the following code. So we haven't yet talked about classes, but let's just create a class here and uh, just to give you an example. So we have a class and we have certain types in that class and we define a directory function. So this takes self as an argument and returns certain information. So let's ignore all the stuff about classes. We're going to go over this in much more detail later on. But I want to show you the 
dear built-in function, which is going to take this class and give us an explanation of it. So if I run this, you're going to see that we get a lot of different stuff here and we get our basic attributes here, like uh, mission, number of flights and type. If we haven't defined this, it would try to hash all of that on its own and give us an output. So basically the dir function is going to try to analyze your class and give you all the parts and details about it. Of course, if you define your own dir uh, method within a class, it is going to exactly give you what you have defined. So let's go to our next function, which is enumerate, which is going to return us an enumerate object, which is an iterable. So it means it is a sequence of objects which we can go through. So let's first create an array. And of course, don't worry, we will also go through arrays in more detail later on. So let's define our rockets. We have a Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, we have Starship and we have also Falcon Heavy. Let's enumerate this. Enumerate rockets and we want to say that the start is going to be at 1. So we're going to start from index 1. Let's clear the console. So this is going to create an enumeration for us. What we can do is pack this into a list, for example, or we can just print it out here. So you can see that it in indeed is an enumeration. So let's run this and you can see this is an enumerate object, which doesn't tell you too much now, but we're basically creating an iterable sequence of objects, which we can list through. This would be very useful when we go to parts like control statements, where we can go with for loops through items. Another also very interesting thing is that every object in the Python universe has an ID and we can get that ID by calling it. So for example, rockets is an object in our Python context. So if we run this, we're going to, oops, I forgot to print it. Of course, we're not going to see anything if we don't print it. Let's do that. And as you can see, we have some unique ID here which can also be useful if you're doing more complex stuff, since this ID is going to be unique for every object. And this is guaranteed. There are many more useful functions, like for example, length. Let's say we want to see the length of our array here. So we can just print this and we have three. So as you can imagine, this is going to be very useful for four loops, where we want to loop through something, but we want to know how many objects there are. We can also find the maximum value so for example, if you create an array called values and we have the numbers one, two, three, what we can do is just print the maximum value of that. Let's run this. And as you see, it's three. We can of course do the same for the minimum value. Let's continue with the map function. So the map function is going to return an iterator that applies a function to each item. So let's say we create a tuple so a tuple is created like this. We're going to go through tuples in more detail later on. So let's say it contains the following values and we want to do something with those values. So we're going to map it from one state to a different state. Uh, first of all, we said we apply a function to each element. So we could create the function and pass it in the map function but we're going to create a lambda function. To simply explain it, a lambda function is something like an inline function. We don't need to create a separate one. We can just create it here inline. It is going to take a certain number of arguments and calculate something and return the calculation. So for lambda is going to take, uh, let's say the value n, and it is going to add those values. And we pass the numbers. So as you can see, we pass the values and we pass the function. We could have, of course, created a separate function and passed it in here, but the lambda function will do it just fine for this simple example. It goes through the numbers, it takes each value, passes it here as a parameter, and then we do a simple addition with those parameters, return it to the results array. So if we want to print our result, let's run this you can see this is a map of objects. But in order to really see them, 
we can create a list out of it. And the interpreter is going to be able to display this list. As you can see, we have two, four, six, and eight. So each one was added with themselves. Since we already talked about for loops, range is also a very interesting function. So with the range, we can define in the simplest uh, step how to enumerate values up to a certain point. We can also say from which point to which point, so for example from 10 to 100, and we can also define the step. So let's say we step every five values. So in order to show you this, we are going to create the for loop for i in range. And again, don't worry about the for loop, we're going to go into more detail around that later on. And let's print the i and we can also specify here an end which is going to be just an empty string so that we have space between the values let's print this and as you can see we have 10 15 20 25 up to 95. we went over some of the most basic types and we created for example a map here by specifying a map but of course you can also create a map by specifying curly braces so you can create in the same way dictionaries like this, you can create sets like this, you can create tuples like this. And this was for example a tuple that we have created here. But we will of course go into much more details later on. And since we're going quite alphabetically, we arrived at our last relatively important function, which is called the zip function. So as it already says, we can zip multiple things together. So let's say we have a list. So better set array, uh, we have a second one, so for example, that includes rockets, cars, and python. This is going to allow us to iterate over multiple stuff at the same time, in parallel. So as you can see, we have those two arrays, and we will be able to iterate over them in parallel. So for item in our zip, and again for loop, but don't worry, we'll go over more details. Then we again want to just print the item. Let's run this again, and as you can see, it combined those values, and we have this output here. Okay, this one got a little bit cut off, but as you can see, one is rockets, two is cars, and four is python. Regarding the built-in constants, uh, we already went over some of them. So for example, false and true. So if you want to create a constant like always false, you can define it like this. And you can also print this value. So if you print always false, you're going to see that it is going to print false. Uh, the same is true for true. You can also use uh, true as a constant, uh, you can also use none as a constant, and you can also define not implemented uh, as a constant, if you want to say that something is not implemented. So this basically concludes the built-in constants in Python. We went over some of the most important ones of them. There is not much point in trying to memorize this, but rather you should be aware that this exists at the Python documentation page and you can always look it up. But it also helps to know some of the most basic stuff and how you work with it. Next, we are going to continue with the built-in types and data types. So all the fancy dictionaries, tuples, and sets we have mentioned throughout this first part. So let's continue. Now it's the perfect time to take our first break. But before we do that, let's quickly recap what we have done so far. So we have set up our environment and we went over the built-in function and constants. Now we're going to continue with input, output, and data types. But before we do that, let's take a quick break and I'll see you in the next video. If you liked the video and you want to follow and continue on, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you and see you in the next one.